I see we have Andy in the room. Hello, Andy. Can you hear us? Um, I think you can, you can unmute yourself. Yep. Awesome. Great. Where are you from, Andy? Derby, UK. Oh, it just popped up. There it is. <laughs> so it's dinner time for you, isn't it? Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> Did you have any um, specific things you'd like us to, to look at in depth or anything you were curious about? We have Jeff here and as well. Well, I noticed that, um, I, I mean, I guess you're using web forms a lot, aren't you? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm one of the maintainers for the web form module with Coleman from the core team. So yeah, I have to kind of use web forms a lot. Yeah. <laughs> That's my well, thing. So I'm, I'm kind of looking at that with a view to learning as much as I can. I, I mean, okay. I use web forms a bit, but, but you, no, you, I could you're, give you, um, you, you're already using them, you say? Yeah. Yeah, so what I could do is I could, I could show you how we would make that schedule task form. That would be, that would just take us a few minutes. Um, I okay. can show you what that looks like and, and how we would put it together from scratch. Would that be helpful? Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, I'm going to go and pop up a screen here. Let me see, do you got my, you got an empty desk here with a Semper IT Canada slide? Yep. Great, okay, so let's make a web form. Um, this, is, this is my own site, but it's also my playground and demo site where schedule, task, CV, live. Um, this is also my playground. So I, I, I prototype little bits in here before I show clients what we can do. Um, so we're in the web form. I always go straight to the CiviCRM tab. Enable CiviCRM processing. And on the form we're trying to make, there were two contacts on the form, right? There was a client and then someone we were assigning the activity to. I always make the the case worker, the youth worker, the person assigned the first one, always. And I do that because the, the first contact on the form, you can make that the logged in user. You can default it to something. So it has a little bit of extra special than if we were to make it a contact too. Yeah. So we want an existing contact to pop up, first name, last name, and we probably want an email field because then we can have that checkbox at the bottom, whether or not we want to email the assigned uh, contact. Um, in contact two, that's going to be the client or the recipient of the service. And we're also going to make that an existing contact, right? Because we want it to make, make it easy and make it a lookup in the database of clients. Um, so we're going to make that an existing client as well. And then this form, is all about activities. We're going to make the user or the activity type is going to be a user select because we're going to decide which activities are going to be able to be selected on this form. The participant is just the client. Participant is actually a bad word here. It's really the target of the activity. Yeah. Um, and the assigned to is going to be the caseworker. Now, what are we going to collect? The date, the time, the duration. We might want a subject. We might want some details. Activity status, I'm going to put that at user select as well because at times you want to schedule something. At times you may just want to record that it's completed. And otherwise you would have to take two steps to get you to schedule it. Um, okay, and then I'm going to just pull these onto the form. So in no time, we've got a truckload of data here, a truckload of fields that looks like this. And I didn't pull in my email probably because I have a different type of email scheduled for it. So I'll have to look at that existing client, right? We can start looking and we can, yeah, that's working. Activity, oh, way too many. So let's go configure some of these elements. The existing contact looked good. Email looks good. The type. So we don't want that massive list. So I'm going to go static options, disable everything. 
And I'm only going to go, let's just pick two of them, a dental filling and a medical intervention. Because maybe this is an application where those really are the only two options that people should be able to log through this form. Right. And that's how for the Alex, we have all these different record buttons. So the basic needs record form actually has these all split up into even more different types. And I'm going to have to show you that status. No, we don't want all these statuses. Again, we want to limit what statuses people can pick and we want to default it to scheduled because it's supposed to be a scheduling form. So we'll default it to scheduled, but we'll have a scheduled and a completed option. And we'll have that on the form. And okay, so now we've got basically all our ingredients. Now how to make it look nice. That's the key element for that is a little module called web form layout module. Have yeah. you used that? Yes. Yeah. 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 Essential. <laughs> it's, you know, so here's a layout box. And I'm going to make a layout box. And once we have a layout box and in Drupal eight, if you've had a chance to look at it, the, um, they're called flex boxes, but they do exactly the same. So now we can move things in there. We don't need to, well, we do want to keep this one lingering around. Okay. Save that. And all of a sudden we're starting to get, a nice form. Oh, I've lost my, my existing contact field. Oh no, here it is. It's hidden as current user. It's the default, but we really want that to be an autocomplete as well. We still want it to default to current user, but autocomplete is nice because then when you schedule something, you could assign it to someone else. I could say, you know, I could say that's not me. That's the default but I could say I'm going to assign that to someone else in my database. I'm going to assign it to Rob, right? Like something like that. Yeah. So um, I'm going to clean up that field set. I don't like field sets very much. So I usually end up all these forms we make usually just end up being flex, you know, layout boxes or flex boxes and nice horizontal clean lines to make good looking forms. So let me show you the, um, I'm just going to go and pull up a screen here from the community health center on the other side before I'll drag it over. And yeah, we'll go to, so we'll go here. So this is my, my calendar on the Alex, which of course only includes test data. Um, and then if I hit schedule task, we, we're basically now well on our way to creating this form. Um, and it's exactly how I just showed you how it's put together. Um, if we, you know, it's just that the layout, right? So the, this is a layout box and then we've got nice clean lines to separate the elements and the email notification, what that does, I don't know if you work a lot with activities, but it will just hide the email field like I'm not, if I'm assigning it to myself, so I can, I can pull up one of my, my kids and I can go to myself, right? And then what I have here is send email notification will pop up my email address and the web form smart enough that if it's visible, it will actually send it out. And if it's not visible, it's not because in, in CV CRM, I don't know if you deal a lot with activities, but there's one switch in a very obscure place um, where you can, like if you go to CV CRM, yeah, there's a very obscure place and I always forget where it lives until I remember it's obscure and then I know to look there. I think it's display preferences. So somewhere in display preferences, you can decide whether or not you want to send email notifications to people that are assigned an activity. Um, yeah. So in the community health center, we turn this off by default and then we let the web form handle it on a case by case basis, because we, we find that a bit more useful. Not everyone needs to be notified about everything. 
Um, yeah, so that's basically what we do with web forms. And if we, um, if we're looking a little bit ahead, um, like I said, I'm one of the maintainers on the web forms. I do a lot with the web forms. And if we look ahead at a couple of examples, this is what this is starting to look like in Drupal 8. Um, the theming options are phenomenal. We can do masking. You see that? We can actually say I want, you know, certain input to be formatted in a certain way. So if I enter postal codes, it will automatically, it will also automatically make this an uppercase, but it will also give me that space in there. Um, and, you know, you can make this look really slick and really nice and yeah, so we're well on our way to porting all the functionality for Drupal set from seven into eight for web forms as well. And um, yeah, if you want to follow us, you know, our Drupal project page is here. And yeah, that's Coleman. That's myself. Um, this is what we do. We, we we're fortunate we were able to assemble a large um, a large number of partners that have been able to either sponsor or help us contribute code um, to get this Drupal 8 effort on the way. And I'm happy to say just two weeks ago, I was able to port it to Drupal 9. So we're ready wow. for Drupal 9. Um, CVSRM itself is not ready yet, but the web form CVSRM integration is ready for Drupal 9. Fantastic, yeah. thank you. That's great. Yeah, you're welcome. Any other questions about web forms um, or curiosities? Or... No. Okay, who else joined us here? Um, let's see, I've lost my window. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to stop sharing for a bit, get my window back. Oh, great. Um, Milika, do I say that right? You can unmute yourself if you want. Um, and Dina's here. So everyone, you can unmute yourself if you'd like to um, let us know what it is you'd like us to highlight. Um, from Jeff's presentation. We just did a little bit on web forms and how to make um, a web form CVCRM, how to get an activity that scheduled form task, how to, how to create that. Um, let me see, what other fun things can we do? Um, what sort of things are you making with web forms, uh, Andy? Yeah, yeah um, it, we, we uh, in Derby, they run a, um, well, up to COVID-19, running a night shelter every year. So we actually use a web form to sign people in, to sign guests in, um, using a pretty much minimal amount of information, just first name and last name, phone number, gender, hardly anything really, um, and maybe any other concerns. So the idea was to have a web form where they could really be very quick. And in fact, they were able to sign in more than one person per minute easily. Um, yeah. Because the people who would be in the night show wouldn't necessarily want to give much information anyway. Um, and, and that worked really well. Um, and, 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 and then later on through the, through the night, the night staff would then uh, maybe update that stuff in Civi so that eventually we would have some good records and we could then you know do some reports and understand what what was going on but really the the the, the start of the process was a, was was the signing web form yeah i'm going to show you another thought on how to speed up intake and speed up recording um, yeah i mean one one feature of, of it obviously is that people would often um keep coming back to the night shelter so if they if they were a second and subsequent visit, then they wouldn't really need to sign in very much. The person would just type a couple of characters of their name and boom, yeah, they would be signed in. So it was a very, very quick process. 
Yeah, I'm going to show you another little bit of a web form that, uh, you know, just to put an idea in your head for the next time you're making a web form and you're looking to speed things up. Um, I'm going to go and, and share my screen again. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to go pull this screen over. Um, so for the Community Health Center, what we have is they, they, the staff on the front end, they look for clients in the CiviStream database, but they do it through a front end view. So in addition to web forms, I use views a lot. Yep. This is a search clients and they can search. Um, and this is, this is one of my tests. This is one of my daughters actually. Um, and we can go to a specific client dashboard, which is the dashboard that Jeff showed. In this case, we have multiple web forms here. Each of these at the top is a web form. There's seven web forms here. Web form number eight is update demographics. Um, this is a view calendar and instrument score is also a view to show how the client's done on evaluations of quality of life to all these other assessment tools. And these in here in the yellow highlights are bundles of web forms. So what we've done is we've introduced a concept where you know, at intake, we have maybe three questionnaires we want to ask. So it becomes a web form bundle where one web form goes to the next web form, goes to the next one to complete the intake process. But quick recording, record basic needs, for instance, this is a web form. And each of these represents an activity. So if we're handing out some clothing and shoes and some food and snacks, and a gift card, it can be recorded with, well, the time it took me to check three boxes and to hit submit. And technically how that works. So if, you, if you're ever thinking, I want to record multiple activities, it's not one activity per web form. Scheduled task is, right? Because you're just scheduling one task. But in this case, look at how many activities are on this form. We can go in the back end here and look at the CiviSRAM tab. We have 37 activities on this form. Wow. And each of them is a user select where only one is available and then um, not a select list, but becomes a checkbox. And that's all out of the box. We did not have to do any custom coding for it. Those are just some of the, the really cool things you can do. So if you ever have a form where you say, I want to record a check-in to the shelter and I want to record that we did something else, you know, maybe at the same time, you could put two activities on your form as check boxes. Yeah. And it will look like this. Um, these are, these are custom fields on activities, right? As you, as you probably know, you can extend. Yeah. Um, activities make custom fields on them and that became important to record in person on site and off site so that that the alex can properly report on statistics on how much service delivery has happened off site in the in the last couple months yeah so a lot of opportunities essentially what we do is all web forms and 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 views and, and what yeah. we find we can do with that is we can highlight certain bits of a CiviSRAM database. So I love CiviSRAM as the data model. I think it's a great storage bucket because it's clean where everything is. But then when we're presenting something to a caseworker or where we're presenting it to, um, to Jeff or his staff, it needs to be like this because to add, 20 activities or, or three activities in CiviSRAM in the back end would take you minutes. You can't do it. You got to do one at a time. So I'm, I'm seeing this as an, as an extension of, um, yeah, of how to get more out of CiviSRAM. So yeah, I'm using it a lot. So if you're not using views just yet, it's, it's definitely what you want to do in combination with web forms. It's extremely powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do use views really, um, for more for back end reporting. But um, um, that's interesting. So you're actually linking from, from a view to a web form. Exactly. And yeah. passing in, um, passing in everything. Um, let me go to my calendar because my calendar, again, only has test data on it. So 
update. And what do I have here? I have a ZZ phone call. Okay. So let me have a look at it. This is a view, right? It's a calendar view. And this is a web form. And because in the view, I know everything about this activity. I don't know if you can read the status bar at the bottom, but we're going to go and pass on CID 2 is 35. And we're going to pass on activity ID 16,100, no, actually 161,337. And we're going to pass in CID 1 equals 2. And we're going to pass in a destination. So there's, there's a couple of things. We're not just going to go to the web form. We're going to give the web form a lot of information about this activity. So if I hit update task, it preloads everything that is there for this activity, right? It's easier to read at the top now. So we're passing in CID yeah. 2, so I know what to fill in for client. We're passing in AID, so I know what activity details to pull up. And we're passing in CID 1, so I know what caseworker was assigned to it. And then the destination, that's just a a Drupal trick that, okay, let's say we updated this. It's actually going to be a longer phone call than we thought it was. No, I don't need an email. Update the task puts us back to my calendar. So that's what destination does. If you give a web form a destination, it's where you go next after you hit submit. So that just saves people rather than getting a thank you for submitting and getting them like nowhere, you can then direct them to the next view. So yeah, all of these, these can apps. You run, can you, sorry, can you just run that by me again, the, the, the destination? Yeah, so the destination parameter. Yeah, okay, if that's. If you look at it, it's yeah. this, oops. It's this bit here at the top. So that's um, where you go next. That's, yeah, if you give um, a form in Drupal, again, that's not a bit of custom code, but if you give a form in Drupal, a destination equals, yep. then then it's like, oh, that's where you want me to go after we hit, yeah, after yeah. we submit the form, which is really useful, right? Because you just keep bouncing people between web forms and views, yeah, and they never have to like, you know, because you kind of know where maybe they want to go next. That that's how I'm looking at that. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's a powerful way to to tie it all together. Um, yeah. So why is your project called Alex? <laughs> the Alex. Al uh, Jeff, you know that. <laughs> yes. So the Alex uh, started in the 1970s. Two nurses in Calgary started it. Uh, and it was on Alexandra Street. Oh, um, okay. But it's kind of evolved a little bit um, to be the Alex could be anyone. So the idea is that it's this really low barrier uh, way to access supports. And so all of our all of our programming, you know, you could anyone could probably walk in off the streets to our programming uh, and receive some sort of social or health support. That's kind of the that's kind of what it's evolved into. So it, it's the Alexandra Community Health Center named after uh, the original street and neighborhood that we were in. Uh, but it's kind of evolved to, to kind of be a place name for for the Alex could could you know could be any any anyone. It's kind of an ambiguous gender yeah. neutral name. <laughs> Great, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Do we? Um, yeah. Is there anything else you'd be interested in, or we have one more guest in the room there? Um, is there anything you would like to see? Sorry, I, I have to stop sharing in order to see your name. Milika, if I say that right. Is there anything you'd like to talk about? Um, no, okay. if not, that's okay too. Um, Great, and Dina has moved on, excellent. Okay, I think that's all the people we have here. Um, and actually, it's half an hour was actually pretty quick. Um, I could talk about web form all day probably, but. <laughs> 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 oh, 
there's so many things you can do with it. Um, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, and yeah, Drupal 8 is even another step up. So I'm excited about that. Are you, you're running Drupal 7? Seven, yeah. I mean, yeah. It was was Drupal eight a lot of work to migrate to? It, it, it probably was pretty tricky, wasn't it? It was for the module code itself, because it's completely different. However, the um, the web form upgrades between projects are not bad at all, because there's a lot of people that want to migrate from a web form module in Drupal seven to a web form in Drupal eight, right? There's a lot more people. There's half a million people using uh, web form module itself in Drupal, right? So there's a lot of that. But the code itself was a lot of work. That was a project we worked on for about a year and a half. And I, I'd say it's about 80% there. Okay. Maybe 85. We'll, we'll always find <laughs> some bits that aren't quite there yet. And it's also time to say some bits just really don't need to be there. I'm trying to be mindful of that as well. Oh, I see Neil is calling us on the main hall. They want to do some closing remarks. Okay, so we should do that. Woo. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Andy. Bye, everyone. You.